Hello, my name is Laura Riuttanen. I'm a meteorologist and a postdoctoral researcher at the University of Helsinki Institute for Atmospheric and Earth System Research. In the coming lectures, I will discuss about the uh, influence of meteorology and transport on air quality. Air pollutants are harmful compounds emitted to the atmosphere. They interact with radiation that governs our climate. They get transported by the atmospheric flows that we call winds. Atmospheric conditions determine the mixing and dilution of the air pollutants. And weather phenomena remove air pollutants from the air. So this first lecture is about the structure of the atmosphere. Our Earth is covered by a thin layer of gases, the atmosphere, that carries the oxygen and enables us to breathe. It generates the greenhouse effect that makes our planet livable. And it also delivers water and energy that are essential to our life. The atmosphere consists of gases, mainly nitrogen and oxygen. It consists of water droplets and ice crystals that form the clouds and precipitation. And it also carries particulate matter like dust, pollen or sea salt. Here is the figure of the atmospheric gas composition. So mainly it's about nitrogen, 78.1%, and oxygen 20.9% and also some small fractions of argon. The other gases are called trace gases. Those are uh, carbon dioxide, neon, helium, methane, krypton, hydrogen, ozone and some others. Let's next take a look on the vertical structure of the atmosphere. The lowest approximately 10 kilometers of the atmosphere are called troposphere. It is where all the weather phenomena happens, like clouds, precipitation and winds. The very first kilometer of the troposphere is called planetary boundary layer. It is the layer that is directly influenced by the surface of the Earth, and it is the layer to which the air pollutants are emitted to. Above the boundary layer is the so-called free atmosphere, where the surface does not uh, affect. In the troposphere, the heat comes from the surface and temperature decreases with height. The troposphere ends to a tropopause, where the temperature profile changes. Above the tropopause, we have the stratosphere, where we are very lucky to have the ozone layer. The ozone uh, absorbs ultraviolet radiation coming from the sun and prevents it to reach the surface of the Earth. Ultraviolet radiation is harmful for the living cells. This absorption of ultraviolet radiation also increases temperatures in the stratosphere and in the stratosphere temperature increases with height. Stratosphere ends with a stratopause and above the stratopause there are other layers, but at this air quality course we will not discuss these layers uh, above. The atmosphere can be studied in many different scales. We can think about phenomena that happens in a micro scale, in a scale smaller than one kilometer. For example, in this scale we have atmospheric turbulence, small scale circulations where heat transfer and gas exchange between surface and the atmosphere happens. We also can have some small single convective clouds that are in the micro scale. We can study the atmosphere in the meso scale from 5 till 500 kilometers approximately. In this scale we have organized convection so-called mesoscale convective systems or squall lines. We have the land sea breeze and catabatic winds. We can also study the atmosphere in a synoptic scale, in a scale of approximately 1000 kilometers. In this scale, we have the mid-latitude weather systems that govern the weather patterns 
in the mid latitudes. We have also phenomena that are of global scale. For example, we have planetary waves or some oscillations like El Niño, the southern oscillation. 